Apache is almost unloaded. Good work, Taylor. Thanks. That's the biggest shipment of silk we ever brought across. And we'll bring a lot more. I hope so, Captain. All ashore who's going ashore? Oh, Dad, you frightened me. Is my one and only passenger ready? Yes, Dad. Where are we going? To collect $40,000 for my cargo. Are you ready? Let's go. Who's got all this money we're out to get? A fellow by the name of Conrad. Nick Conrad. I'm to meet him at the Green Eagle. Green Eagle? Yeah. What kind of a place is that? Oh, sort of a roadhouse. Dad, look. Danger ahead, Dad. I didn't know you were superstitious. Well, I'm not really. Well, I'm, I'm glad to know that. Well, just a few minutes with this man, Conrad, and we'll be back out on the ocean, where there are no black cats. <laughs> Matthews, I'm glad to see you. Mr. Conrad, my daughter. How do you do? It's a pleasure. Supposing we find a table somewhere. It's back here. Sit down, Captain. It's a nice place, Mr. Conrad. I'm glad you like it. Well, your silk's in the warehouse, Mr. Conrad. That's fine. You'll just sign this receipt. There it is. You and there's your $40,000. In cash? I didn't expect to get it in, in money. I always prefer to pay in cash. You don't mind, do you? Well, I guess it's all right, but it's a lot of money to carry around. Okay, he's got it. Yes, sir. Hello, Jerry. How's the newspaper business? Oh, pretty quiet right now. Well, I might have a story for you later this afternoon. Thanks, Ed. Tell me, uh, did you enjoy your trip, Miss Matthews? Yes, thank you. Pardon me, Captain Matthews. The gentleman wants you on the telephone. He says he's your first mate. You'll pardon me. I'll entertain your daughter until you return. Don't be long, Dad. Tell me, have you any friends here, Miss Matthews? No. That is, not yet. Ah, 
in here. So that's why I was paid in cash. Come on, I say. Hurry up, I ain't got all day. Give me that money. Not a chance. Give me that money. I'll show you. Now, wait a minute. Don't use that in here. Remember the boss's orders. We'll take care of them, all right. Now take it easy. Remember, you're an old man. Let me worry about that. Give me that dough. Did he put up a fight? He's a tough old rooster. Yeah, well, get the dough. Well, it was worth it. Yeah. Give that man back his money. Get out of here. This is our business. Pardon me, will you please? Certainly. nosing around the private office. Is he a copper? I don't know, but whoever he is, we can't afford to have him spoil our last job. Our last job? What about that shipment tomorrow? Never mind about that. Things are getting too hot. We're clearing out tonight. Get rid of that fellow. We'll take care of him.
Kabbalah. What is it? That guy got the dough. Hey, he's got the 40 grand. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going. My father hasn't returned yet. Have you seen him? Yes, I know. He's in there. Dad! Dad, are you hurt badly? I'm all right. I'm sure he headed this way. You fellas take the corner. Steve and I will double back. What's the matter, Fred? You look worried. I am worried. I'm all upset. I had a terrible dream last night, Jerry. It was awful. I bet the two crooks came in here. Right in here. I wouldn't let that upset me. Dreams never come true. I hope. How's the music coming, Fred? Oh, fine. I had a piano moved in so I could play in between slices of bacon. Stop me if I get to bragging. Say, I could play Chinatown with only six mistakes. And I could play Goodbye Forever. I don't want to hear it. Here, hide this. Hey, well, well, I'd hurry. Not there. Not there. No, no, no. In the case, mister? No. Those crooks are after it. Crooks? Not in there. Not in there. Oh, dear. If there's anything I hate, it's some money. I thought he'd said dreams didn't come true. Oh, good afternoon, good afternoon, gentlemen. What's good about it? You fellas are mighty hard to discourage. Skip that. Hand over that dough. What dough? Uh, if it's bread you're talking about, I have rye, white... Shut up, smart guy. Here, here. These guys are working together. You'll be sorry now. My friend, Detective O'Brien, is coming in here. And he'll arrest you. Coppers. Listen, you mugs. You'll be covered when that guy comes in here. And one peep out of you to that flat foot and we'll let you have it. You understand? Yeah, we understand. Hello, Fred. Nice to see you, huh? Hello, Fred. <laughs> it was. I mean, is. <laughs> How are you, Jerry? As good as can be expected. How are you, O'Brien? Oh, all right. My job's getting me down. No excitement. Nothing ever happened. Nothing? Well, uh, practically nothing. Um, how's your sausage today? It's a lot of baloney. <laughs> hey, don't you think that's funny? It's a lot of baloney. <laughs> well? Now that we've had our little laugh, let's get on to business. How about some sausage? Hmm. I'll take this one. Hey, this is very nice and fresh, Mr. O'Brien. Nice fresh liverwurst. Smoke? Yeah. I don't want it. I want this one. Well, how about some nice fresh head cheese? No, it makes me bellious. I tell you, I want this one here. Go on, Fred. Give it to him. I want this one. I like bologna. Half of it? No, all of it. Uh, 
I still think you should have bought the head cheese, Mr. O'Brien. I told you that head cheese makes me bilious. Here you are, Mr. O'Brien. Put it on the book, Fred. I'm getting plenty of practice at bookkeeping. <laughs> you all do hand me a laugh. <laughs> well, goodbye, Fred. Goodbye, Jerry. Goodbye, boys. So long. Come on, you. Where's that money? You gonna give it to us, or do you want the boss to take it? It's in on our racket, eh? Well, I hadn't thought of it. You've certainly got a lot of nerve. But I like it. Thanks. Now look here. I won't stand for anybody working against me. And that's definite. But if you're smart, I might be able to use two men. You could make more money on my side with less danger. How about joining up with us? What are the dues? Half of that 40,000. 40,000? Huh? Where's that money? He doesn't know. I still admire your nerve. We like yours, too. Cut the comedy. Hey! Stick him up! Come on, start reaching, boys. Let's get out of here. You took the words right out of my mouth. Stay where you are. Keep your hands in the air. Steve, Chuck, get them! Through the cafe. There they go. York Street. Yes, sir. Hey, that's my address. What are we going there for? To get the money. It ain't there. Not there? Where is it? It's in the baloney that old Brian bought. What'd you give it to him for? You said to. I said to. Sure, don't you remember? That's a you... fine place to hide it, in a baloney. You know where O'Brien lives? Sure. 3745 Gordon Street. Yes, sir. On it, Steve. What do you think I'm doing? Wait, we'll be right back. I guess he's not home. I'll try a window. Oh, that will be the good. <laughs> He lives upstairs. That makes it more complicated. I guess I can get up from this side. I'll help you. Oh. I'll be right down. Oh, take your time. Jerry! 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 They're, they're coming! And I'm a-going! They're right in that house upstairs. They climbed up the chimney.
Hey, Larry, come on, jump! Look, they got away. Did you get the petty cash? Sure. Slucky wasn't hungry, he'd eaten the whole thing. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? I'm going to put it in a safe place till I find that sea captain. What sea captain? Oh, I haven't time to tell you now. Read tomorrow's paper. <laughs> Jerry has certainly turned in a grand story. Thanks, Harry. Not only beat the other newspapers, but the police department. Well, tell me, how in the world did you get a hold of that money? Oh, I don't want to appear modest, but it was just an accident. I stopped in at the Green Eagle for a sandwich, and, well, things began to happen, and that's the story. And a pretty good one, too. Look at it. Look at that front page. And it took a newspaper reporter to get the goods on him. He's a pretty smart boy reporter. He's a friend of mine. Well, let Mari on your day off. We didn't get a report on this case until a few minutes ago. Maybe Conrad's still out of that joint. What joint? The Green Eagle. Where's that? Here. Take this. The address is in the article written by your friend. Well. Maybe we better be going. That's a swell idea. Come on, Hogan. That one? Yeah. It's just our luck. He would be a newspaper reporter. It sure is tough. And the coppers will put the heat on plenty now. Ah, oh, don't worry. They'll never look for us here. People in this neighborhood think I'm respectable. <laughs> they don't know you. I'll show that sergeant if it takes a thousand years. I don't think you live that long. Mm. Get my hands on that 40,000. Hey, if you don't look where you're going, you're going to have your hands on a lily. A lily. Bah! <laughs> Let's take them alive if we can. this guy, Conrad. Why, that's funny. I got a tip on that fellow. Yes? What is it? He skipped town last night. Mm. That's a tip? Sure. Come on, Hogan. That horse of mine came in at that. Where's Conrad? Search me. I should have been here a half hour ago. Hello, 
Hello, Nick. Where have you been? Pick this up at the customers. Well, are you... Are you going to see? Not if I can help it. Well, what's the idea, boss? That reporter never had a good look at Captain Matthews. So anyone looks like a sea captain can go up to that newspaper office and claim the 40 grand and get it. And this will help the cause along. Well, which one of us is elected? You are, Pete. Well, do you think I could get away with it? Well, sure. I helped myself to the captain's credentials before he was taken away. Yeah, you're clever, you are. Thank you, Captain. I hope I can put this over. I uh, understand you've got my money here. So you're Captain Matthews, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Look closer to me. What do you think, Jerry? They belong to Captain Matthews, all right. Mm-hmm. Give him the money. I certainly appreciate this. <laughs> you... You don't know what this is going to mean for me. Thank you very, very much. Well, anyway, he thanked us. At least he could have done a subscribe for the paper. How do you know he can read? <laughs> I'm Captain Matthews' daughter. I understand you have the $40,000. Well, we had it, but your father was just here and we gave it to him. Why, there must be some mistake. I just left my father at the Hillside Hospital. Well, miss, uh, claimed the money, had the papers to prove that he was the captain. Remember me, don't you? Certainly. Then you remember the middle-aged gentleman, the sea captain, who was with me at the cafe. Surely. Well, that was my father. I surmised as much. I didn't have a chance to see his face. Oh. Maybe she is the Matthews girl. I'm sure of that, Harry. Sure of it? Yes. Then we give him the money to the crooks. <laughs> oh, no, we haven't. But I, I don't understand. What are you driving at? Well, the money's still in the safe. I'll get it for you. Huh. There's your money. Oh, thank you very much. Say, how did you happen to give that guy the phony envelope? I wasn't sure of him. So I thought if he really was Captain Matthews, He'd be back when he discovered he didn't have the money. Getting pretty smart, ain't you? <laughs> Keep it up, my boy, and someday you'll be a city editor. Oh, I thought I was going to amount to something. <laughs> oh, take him away, Miss Matthews. Take him away. Who? Oh, me? Sure. You've got a lot of money in that bag, and he'd make a swell bodyguard. That would be nice. Well, that is, if you don't mind. It would be a great pleasure. Thanks, Harry. Thank you. What's all this thank you stuff? It's all I've been getting all day. And 
Thanks again, Harry. You don't know what's going to mean to me. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. Well, I got it. Good. I, don't I just walked right in and he handed me the dough just like a sucker. No argument, no nothing. There must be some mistake. I... You said your father was in the hospital. I hope he's not seriously hurt. Fortunately, he isn't. But I am worried about him and this. What are you going to do about this? I'd like to put it in the bank for the present. When it's after three, I'm afraid it's too late. Well, what do we do? How about a bite of food and we talk it over? I think that's a grand idea. How do you do? How do you do? Fred helped me save your money. Oh. Oh, you're the captain, eh? <laughs> no, I'm the captain's daughter. <laughs> the captain. Ha! I've heard of the farmer's daughter, but never the captain's. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you ever hear about two people who are starving to death? No, but I'll listen. Well, come on over to the table and find out. <laughs> And now, what for the starving people? Well, how about some of those good cold cuts in that grand potato salad? And you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly appreciate what you've done for me. I wish there was some way I could reward you. I've already had my reward. What do you mean? You're having lunch with me, aren't you? Oh, you're very sweet. Huh? I'm going to play a little song I just wrote. I call the song Eloise. The girl's name is really Mary, but that doesn't fit. <clears throat> of Italian in there. <laughs> I think it's a dash of chili. <laughs> <laughs> All is a faith of fall. Are you paying any attention to me? Yeah, true. A true
That was beautiful, Jerry. Thanks. Yeah, sounds better with him singing it, doesn't it? <laughs> I had no idea you were so accomplished, Mr. Klein. Oh, uh, you'll find it on the check. Put the check on the books. <laughs> Poor old books. <laughs> oh, what time is it? 3.45. Oh, I must get back to the hospital. Dad will be wondering what's become of me. By all means, I'll take you to a cab. What do I do with this money? I don't like to carry it around with me. Money? What money? The $40,000. What, again? I really think the best thing to do is leave it right here. Here? Sure, in your safe. Those racketeers think it's in the newspaper office. Fred's on the level. Suppose those racket men come back here. Don't worry. Lightning never strikes twice in the same place. It don't? Of course not. Then you will help, won't you? Sure. Who said I would? Well, here it is. So it is. Here, take this in case anything happens. Hmm. Thanks a lot. Oh, that's all right. Well, Fred, see you later. Bye-bye. You aren't well enough to get out. My dear, we've got to. We can pick up the money on our way to the boat and get out of here. But I think you really should... Now, am I the skipper or not? Of course you are. Then give me my cap. Okay, skipper. You win. Come on. Pretty nice gal, huh? Ah, uh, she's perfect, Harry. Hello? Mason? Hello? Jerry Mason speaking. What? What's the address? 10311 Foy Street. Murder? I'll be right over. Who called? One of the boys from headquarters, I guess. Good luck. Thanks. That's him now. Who is it? Jerry Mason of the Herald. It's a newspaper reporter. Duck, fellas. Come in. Someone? Not a bad gag getting me here on a murder story. Stick around. We'll stage one for you. Now what? You're going to get that money for us. Are you sure? Positive. You won't get out of here until you do. Tough, don't you? Steve, get some rope and tie him up. No, you don't. 
matter, Miss Matthews? My dad and I are leaving. I want to pick up the money. Sure. Have you seen Jerry? Not since he was here with you. Have you got a pencil? Sure, here's a pencil. Thanks. I'll get the money for you right away. Your money. Oh, you're a dear friend. Will you give this note to Jerry? I'll go out and find him right away. Thanks. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, let's go. To Pier 146. Jerry. <laughs> he left here about 20 minutes ago. He did? Where'd he go? I think you'll find him there. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe we better phone the station, had we? Nothing doing. Now that we get a line on those crooks, maybe Jerry can give us a tip. Hey, Fred! Hello, O'Brien. Is Jerry inside? No, I'm on the way to see him now. Here's where he is. Get right to there. Okay. You've had a chance to cool off a bit. Maybe you'd like to show Chuck and Steve where the dough is. Maybe I wouldn't. Steve, take all the identification marks off of this fellow. Make him talk. Listen, smart guy. I'll give you about three minutes to change your mind. You're just wasting your time. Just the same, I'll give you three minutes. Wait for me, will you? Sure. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? Tell Jerry I want to speak to him, will you? I'll tell him. You got about a minute left. Who is it? It's me, Fred. I want to see Jared. It's that goofy guy from the delicatessen. We'll take care of the two of them at the same time. Come in. Say, Jerry, I've got a... Uh, 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 I must be in the wrong place. Excuse me. I, uh, no, no, no. You're in the right place, all right. Yeah. Say, you can't read that note. That, uh, that's Jerry's. Get this. Dear Jerry, father and I... Father and I are sailing at 5 o'clock from Pier 146. Please meet us there. Lorraine Matthews. Well, there's one thing sure. If they didn't have the money, they wouldn't be going away. Looks like Pier 146 for us. Fred, get out of here. Beat it. Hey, you can't tie my friend up. You see that? Oh, what do I care for your darn old gun? I wouldn't be in such a hurry if I was you. Let's go in and get him. What's your hurry? He'll be out any minute. I can't prepare if you get what I mean. <laughs> I'm going to play with you like a cat plays with a mouse. <laughs> They're rats, ain't they, Jerry? Stick them up. 
shoot you, and I guess I will. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to load them. <laughs> well, let's get out of here. No, wait, the back way, the car's out there. What's the matter, dear? I was just thinking about someone. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll meet you. I hope you're right. <laughs> I wonder what's keeping those fellas. Keep your shirt on. Keep your shirt on. Say, those fellas are in a hurry. Come on, Fred. Let's get out of here. No good anyhow. Hey, that one went off. Wonder which one it was. Oh, never mind about that. Get out of here. Oh, we gotta beat him to the pier. Oh, Brian and Holton are out front. That's good, but get me out of here. Don't go. Come on, that's a fool trick of forgetting to unload the guns. I'm going yeah. back to that baloney. All right, get me. Right to pier 146. Those racketeers are at the house, Nick. Call headquarters. Nothing doing. We'll get them ourselves. How are you, Captain? We've got to set sail at once. Impossible. There's only a couple of men aboard. The rest are all in town. Round them up. Yes, sir. Those crooks. They're after that money. Get up in there and hide. George, Jim, come lower this boat. Come on, boys. Stop her! Hold it! Come on, pull up that boat. Come on, get out of there. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I'll take that. There. Lay off. Thanks. That must be it. Come on. Oh, boy. Will this be a feather in my hat? Come on. Got a word out of you two. Come on, boys. Where do you think you're going? What's the idea? You'll find out. Hmm. 
Take care. Get those two. You're going below. But what about you? I'll be all right. Come on here, I'm gonna put the bracelets on you. Get out, come on. Come on. Hello, Brian, you got all your customers? Oh, boy. I guess the sergeant lay off of me from now on. <laughs> come on, you mugs. Come on, bring them on. Get up there and get that car. Get him up, Dick. Go on, go on. Step up. O'Brien. Captain, what became of Jerry? Oh, he's right over there with the skipper. What are you? How do you feel now, Captain? Much better, thank you. I'm all right. That's good. Well, I guess I'll say goodbye. I think there's someone wants to see you. Must you go? 
I should. Must you really? Say, Captain, where is the, uh... Uh-oh. Captain, let me show you the latest thing in ocean. Where'd you say this boat was going? China. You think there'd be room for an extra passenger? Sure. 